Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Good Shepherd. It's great to be in God's house with you today. We have a wonderful worship service planned for us today. A worship service, as you just saw, all the children from our school walk into the church. They're going to beautify our service toward the end with an anthem. We have our musicians up front here. They're going to be beautifying our service throughout and praising God. So thank you for everything that the children are going to do, that you musicians are going to do here for us today, and, and to praise God for us today, too. Uh, we are blessed today's service. We don't only have one sermon. We have three sermons. So you guys are all being treated today, triple specially. We also are celebrating Mrs. Melber for retirement. Uh, thanks to God for her ministry, for what she's done for the children of this school for so many years. We are thanking God for the servicemen and women who have served our country, who have given us freedoms. We're thanking God for summer to be here. It's just going to be a wonderful worship service, so it's wonderful to be in God's house with you all today. Let's praise and thank God together and, and worship Him for what He does for us. He gave us Jesus. He gave us His love. He gave us heaven. And it's wonderful to be here with all of you today to celebrate that. So let's join our voices and our hearts together and, and praise God together today. Let's uh, open our service with our opening hymn, Christ is our Cornerstone. worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner.
Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. You may be seated and we'll sing together. This is the Feast of Victory. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, was taken up in glory and intercedes for us at your right hand. Through your living and abiding word, give us hearts to know him and faith to follow where he has gone, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson for today is taken from Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10. It says this. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Masia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they paused by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. 
This is our first lesson for today. Uh, Paul was a apostle, was a preacher, was a traveling evangelist, and you can see that from our first lesson for today, that he went from country to country to country to country, wanting to preach the word of God to people. And then he went from city to city to city to city throughout that country, and he preached the word of God to people. And he was on one of those missionary journeys in our lesson for today when he was kept by the Holy Spirit from entering into a country. And that's kind of a weird thing to think about that the Holy Spirit would keep the Apostle Paul here from entering into country to preach the word of God there. He had a heart to preach. He wanted to go out and tell these people about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit kept him from going there. And then this dream came. This dream came to him and said, from a man of Macedonia, help us. Help us. And so he took that as a call from the Holy Spirit, which it was, and he went to Macedonia, and he went and preached from town to town to town. And guess what he preached? The word of God to people. So these are different people. Different people than what he expected to preach to, different people than what he preached to in Jerusalem, and now he's traveling around, and he's seeing different faces in front of them. And I look out at all of you, and I see different faces in front of me. And I see people from different areas, even people from different churches that we have visiting with us today, probably because our kids are singing, and to celebrate Mrs. Melbourne. Different people. And Paul was in front of them, as I'm in front of you here. And yet, no matter who was in front of him, he preached the same thing. The word of God to people. And whoever was in front of him, whatever face, whatever country, whatever they looked like, whatever church they went to, that message rang out that he was there for one specific reason. To share with them Jesus. And that's what Paul was doing here in our lesson for today. And so there's so many different people in our world, so many different people that Paul got to witness to, so many different people in West Bend here, and yet we preach the same thing, the word of God to people. And they so desperately need it. And we so desperately need it. Help us, this man from Macedonia said. Help us. To shout out the word help means that you're in trouble. To shout out the word help means that you're having a very difficult time and you can't get through it on your own. This world that we have is full of sinfulness that's inside of us, sinfulness that reigns, things that are trying to take us away from God, things that are trying to pressure us and rip us away from Him. And all we can do with that when we notice that and when we see inside of ourselves sinfulness to take us to hell help us help us and we shout that out today like this man from Macedonia did because we need help there's no way we can get to heaven on our own there's no way we can get through this world on our own there's no way we can do it by ourselves we need help and I loved what he preached. He preached the word of God, but it describes it a little bit better right toward the end of our lesson. God had called us to preach the gospel to them. The good news about Jesus and what he came to do. So there's us saying, help us. And there's the gospel saying, I have. Here's my son Jesus, who helped you with your individual sins inside of yourself all the things you've ever done wrong, all the things that are pulling you farther and farther down, away from God, he's grabbed onto you with the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And what is that gospel? It's the word about Jesus. Yeah. He grabbed you and he pulled you back. And yeah, all different. All different people here, all different people that Paul preached to, and yet the same gospel that we so desperately need, the gospel that Jesus loves us. And he helped us. And we celebrate that gospel in that word today. Amen. Let us now sing together our hymn, Thy Strong Word.
What would it be like if you were in a relationship with someone or married to someone if they were exactly like you? Exactly like you. You say, where should we go for dinner? And both of you at the same time, chili. Do we even have a chilies in West Bend? Yeah. No. <laughs> yes, no. Which one? No. Okay, I did in Illinois. <laughs> But well, what would that be like? Wouldn't that be kind of boring? I mean, you would always be wanting to do the same things. You would always get along. You wouldn't have any arguments. No? It would be kind of an awkward sort of relationship if you always like to do the same things. You know, there's chemistry between people because they're differences. The phrase is, differences attract, right? But we are all different. And we all have different personalities, and we all like different things, and we all do different things. And so in relationships, to have those differences, it's a great thing. And yet, in a couple, in a relationship, in a marriage, even though there's two different people, one person likes chilies, the other person likes Applebee's, even though there's two different thoughts about this or two different thoughts about that, a marriage, you come together in unity. And you join together and you share that same wonderful relationship of a man and a woman that God has blessed. And that's the wonderful blessings of a marriage. Companionship, coming together for goodness to happen, for joy to happen. And so two different things coming together for a wonderful unity together. We're all different. And yet God has brought this wonderful faith inside of our hearts, which connects us. And now I'm not talking just about a husband and wife here anymore, or a boyfriend, girlfriend here anymore. I'm talking about this whole assembly here, and the whole Christian church and all the world, that even though we're all different, we can like this place or that place, or have this attitude or that attitude, we still come together in unity and faith, centered around what Jesus has done for us. And our lesson for today, our second lesson, is John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. It says this, it's Jesus praying. Jesus praying about the unity of faith. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as I have loved, you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them, and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. There's a Canadian who talked about this phrase, a global village. A global village is kind of a unique phrase, global village. That means that everybody in all the world, no matter where you live, can be all together at the same time. And the one thing that brings this global village together is technology. Technology, right? We can push live right now on my cell phone and I can hold it up here for the world to see and anybody who can find that can see it in all the world. You can see this global village that I'm talking about. You know exactly what's going on in a different country while it's happening, basically. And so technology, it can bring us close together with other people in all the world. It can bind us and, and have us interact with people who we might not be able to interact with. But technology can also bring us further apart. Who here has ever texted someone in the same house? <laughs> Come up for dinner. <laughs> right? 
further apart, even though technology can cause this global village to happen. And I kid you not, I was at a fire last night with eight teenagers, and all of them had their cell phones up. Global village. And yet, we can be so far apart from one another. And speaking of marriages, as you sit home at nighttime, how often is your cell phones in your hands? As you're sitting on the couches right next to each other, and yet a world apart. So what does this mean? It means that we're all different, and yet we can all be bound together by commonality. And technology in this world can cause that to happen with the Word of God. And we can use the Word of God in technology to share the message of Jesus with others so that we can bind people together in this same faith that Jesus is talking about in our prayer today. He wants people to have this same faith. He wants people to believe in him. He wants people to know God. And one way we can do that is through technology. We're hitting live on our Facebook and portraying this service through our internet feed. And yet, we need to be aware that as technology can be a wonderful thing for us, it can also pull people apart. So be aware of that in your personal relationships with other people. Be aware of that in your marriages. Be aware of that throughout your entire life. But also, be aware that God has given us technology for the good of faith. That this can pull people together and it can create faith in people's hearts so that they can believe in Jesus as their Savior. You know the word theology. Theology is the teaching of God's word, the study of God's word. Technology, all you have to do is add a C and an N to it, which is kind of funny. Theology, technology, a C and an N. It's all about what you put those C and Ns for. C and N could mean care nothing. Care nothing. That technology can take your mind away, that can doubt. Technology can pull you apart from people. Technology can make you care nothing. But technology can also lead you to theology, which is care and nurture. Care and nurture. Now I'm just kind of making things up right now. But care and nurture, that's what theology is all about. That's what brings us this unity of faith inside of our hearts. Care and nurture. Care and nurture from God. That he was so caring, that he was so nurturing, that he sent his son Jesus into our world to love us. Care and nurture. Care and nurture is what Jesus did for each and every one of us in this world. Care and nurture is what put this faith inside of our hearts. Our lesson for today says... I want them, I want myself to be in them, Jesus said. I want to be in them. Care and nurture is when he put himself in you through the water of baptism. Care and nurture is when he sent the word of God into your ears, into your hearts, and created this faith in him. Care and nurture is when after your faith was created inside of you, that you are now being taught the word of God exactly who God is and what he's all about. This is caring and nurturing from our Father in heaven. And this produces this unity of faith between us. So technology, theology, CNN, don't care nothing. Care and nurture. Care and nurture is what God produces in us because of his care and nurture. Care and nurture is what we portray in our Christian lives toward our sons and our daughters, towards our husbands and our wives. Care and nurture is what our teachers in our school share with their students who are in front of them. Care and nurture is what Mrs. Melbert has done for so many years in our midst here. Care and nurture is what your child has benefited from because of what she's done. And the caring and nurture that she gives in her classroom is the care and nurture that Jesus gave to her. And she's just expressing that care and nurture to your kids. 
you see, we're different. So many different students, so many different thoughts, so many different questions, so many different attitudes. And yet the care and nurture that God has given to us has produced this unity of faith so that we all believe that Jesus loves us and cares for us and died on the cross for us. So let's enjoy this unity of faith that we have all had and let's care and nurture, care and nurture the way God has for us. Amen. We now sing together, Oh How Good It Is. Our soloist will sing verse 1 for us, and you guys are invited to join in on verses 2 and 3. invite the young children to come forward for our next sermonette. It's great to sing songs with you today. Oh. Can you stand up for me? Thank you. Can you stand up too by him? Oh, your dress stuck. There you go. 
go. Who's taller? I. Who's shorter? Yeah. Who has longer hair? Do you have longer hair than him? Yes. Who has bigger ears? <laughs> yeah, I think you do too, judging by that. That's good. Can you wiggle your nose? You can't really wiggle your nose. She can wiggle her nose pretty good. I like that. Who has a dress on? No. Oh, yeah. Would you wear a dress? No. no. Oh, good. good. <laughs> and you can sit down for me. Thank you very much. Can you stand up for me? Can you stand up too? Oh, that's great. Who's taller? Me. Yeah, you are. Who has bigger feet? Me. Okay. Who has smaller hands? Put your hands up next to each other. Who, whose hands are smaller? Yeah, your hands are smaller, huh? Who's prettier? <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Okay, you can sit down for me. Thank you very much. Can you stand up for me? And can you stand up for me? Oh, thank you. Who's older? Who's older? Point. No, he's older than you. He's way older than you. That sounds good. Who has a stuffed animal in their hands? You do. That's great. And who has brown eyes? Look at each other's eyes. Who has brown eyes? <laughs> okay, sit down, sit down. Now, look at each other. Does anybody look exactly like you? Mm, some people are joking around today, but does anyone look just like you? Same hair, same eyes, same skin color, same foot size. Does anybody? No, nobody. You guys are all different. But I have something that connects you, that makes you all the same. Guess what? Are you guys all going on vacation together? No, of course not. That can't be the same. Who's going to a lake this summer? Who's going to go to a lake? Okay. Yeah. Who's going to go on a walk? A hike? Yeah. Uh, who's going to swim in a swimming pool? Okay, you can put your hands down. See, although a, although a lot of you are going to do some same things together this summer. You guys are all different and you're all even going to go to different places on vacation. But there is one place where you guys are all going to go and that place is heaven. That place is heaven and heaven is this most wonderful place and heaven is the best place and our next lesson from God's word today says this. It's Jesus coming. It says this, Jesus is speaking through the word of God. It says, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates of the city. Outside of the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come and let the one who hears come. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. That just said that Jesus is going to come soon. When Jesus went to heaven, he says, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take you to be where I am. Where is Jesus? In heaven. In heaven. When you hear that Jesus is coming back soon, how does that make you feel? Feel. Does that make you really happy? But what if Jesus comes back when you're not doing something nice? What if Jesus comes back when you're being naughty during a children's sermon? What if? Does 
that make you a little scared? We all do bad things, don't we? In our Bible verse that we just read, there was some bad things that people did in that lesson too, and sometimes we do bad things by not listening. Sometimes we do bad things by, by hitting others and hurting other people's feelings, by not sharing our toys, by not listening to our moms and dads. And what if Jesus comes back when we're doing those bad things? We don't have to be afraid because our lesson said he has washed us and made us white robes. There was a time in your life where you went at this baptismal font. Sometimes it has water. And that water connected to God's word in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit washes all the bad things you've done away. And it makes you a child of God. It makes you a child of God, and it says you're forgiven from all the bad things you do, all the times you haven't listened during a children's sermon. My son. <laughs> all the times you said naughty words, all the times you haven't been nice to your brothers or sisters, at your baptism, all those sins were washed away. And you were made God's child. So when Jesus says, I am coming soon, you can be so happy that he's going to take you home to heaven. Now, our lesson for today also said that it's going to be like this. It's going to be a free gift. Who wants a gift? You guys like presents? It's a free gift. Jesus is going to give us a gift when he comes back, and that's the gift of taking you all to heaven. It also says this. He's going to give you a reward. A reward's a good thing. A reward sometimes is money. A reward sometimes is candy. A reward sometimes is McDonald's Happy Meal. Well, this reward, this reward is heaven with Jesus forever. And this reward is so good. And you get to be with Jesus because he loves you so much. And so even though you guys are all different, some are tall, some are short, some have little feet, some have big feet, some are handsome, some are pretty. Even though you're all different, you guys are all going to go to the same place, and that's heaven. And there's one more line I want to mention. Stay seated, watch this. There's one more line. It says in our lesson that you are going to be able to go through a gate. When you go to heaven... It's like you get to go through the gates of heaven. And do you see this? This can be like a gate, right? And so when you walk back to your pews, I'd like you to walk through here. Walk through here because you know that you're going to go to heaven one day because of what Jesus has done for you and how much he loves you. Can we say a prayer first? Dear Jesus, thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for making us different. It's so much fun to be different, but thank you that we all get to go to the same place of heaven because Jesus loves us and he's forgiven us. Amen. You can stand up and walk through the gate on your way back. And we can play some music while that happens. <laughs>
Let us please stand and sing together our next hymn, Lord, when your glory I shall see. <laughs> together and confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our offerings. I invite everyone to sign a welcome worshiper card. One side's for our members, the other side's for our guests, and you can pass them to the diagonal aisle.
Please stand and we'll sing together. Come follow me. seated for prayer. Oh Lord God, we give you our heartfelt thanks for the precious gift of your son Jesus, whom you sent that we might have life and have it to the full. For this great salvation, for our deliverance from sin, death, and the power of the devil, and for the sweet hope of heaven, we glorify you, O oh Lord God. Bless the church, and let it be, both here in this congregation and everywhere, a loving union of people in faith and good works. We ask that you especially keep us close to you and each other during these summer months, so that your name will be glorified both now and forever. Almighty God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we thank you for the men and women who have served and continue to serve in the armed forces of this nation. Through their lives of service, you have worked to protect the freedoms that we daily enjoy. Enable us to honor and respect these men and women who have sacrificed much for our personal benefit. Strengthen their families, shower them with love and peace, while those they care for may be placed in harm's way. Comfort those who are far from home, give them courage to face the dangers, and grant them protection from all evil. Let us never take for granted the cost of freedom and the blessings that come from you, the true source of our freedom. Dear God, today we come before you with special prayer requests on behalf of some of our members. We pray for Rosalie Weiss, who is diagnosed with epilepsy, Bonnie Krieger, who will undergo a medical procedure, brother-in-law Kurt and Chris Horbis dealing with foot infection, and the sister of a member dealing with complications from surgery. Dear Lord, direct their eyes to the skies where you are at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, you judge the living and the dead, but you also strengthen people in this earth, and you rule all things for the benefit of those who love you. Dear God, send that direction into their lives, strengthen their earthly bodies so that they can go about their earthly lives as they once had. Dear God, we pray for one of our members, Emily Olson, and Benjamin Bolt. Bitter, who will be married on June 3rd. We ask that you bless their marriage, shower them with your love so that your love can be displayed in their marriage. We also ask a special blessing upon this family as Benjamin also received his vicar call to Sure Fountain, Woodside, New York. Dear God, we know that you will go with them, continue to help them serve you, and spread the word of God there. Dear Lord, we thank you today, especially for Mrs. Sarah Melbourne, as she celebrates her retirement. We thank you for all that she has done. We thank you for blessing her with the faith to believe in you. And we thank her, you for all the blessings that you have given to our children through her. Continue to bless her throughout her life and continue to be with her each and every day. Dear God, we thank you for another wonderful school year that you have blessed us with that is now completed it was a wonderful blessing to all those here. 
It was a wonderful blessing for my personal family, and I can say that for the families who attend our school. Thank you for being with our children. Help them to all have a great summer, and let us all come back together safely for next year. Dear God, we thank you for 101 years of life that you have granted to Richard Krieger. We thank you for the faith that has been in his heart from his baptism, and we ask that you continue to remind him that you will always be with him for as long as he remains on this earth. Dear Lord, we thank you once again for all those who serve our country and all those who gave their life to serve us and to give us our freedom. Comfort those who continuously mourn the loss of a loved one. Help us to remember what they did, they have done for us and for our country. Hear us, Lord, as we now bring you our private petitions. Now, O oh Lord, keep us steadfast and always abounding in your work, that we may know our labor is not in vain. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn, The Church's One Foundation.
Yeah, good morning to everyone. It's great to be in God's house. It's great to worship with you. Special welcome to the visitors that we have with us. Great to have you here. Great to hear the children sing. Children, thank you for beautifying our service. Thank you for our musicians and our soloists. And thank you, everyone, for being here. It's great to worship God with you. And a thank you to Mrs. Melberg especially. And, and during, uh, during our normal Bible study hour in between services, we will have a reception for Mrs. Melberg and, and celebrate her retirement. Not that we're happy that you're leaving, but uh, that we rejoice with you that you have served God and served our congregation and, and our students for so long. I, I haven't known you very long, uh, six months maybe, um, but I can, I can tell you are a great teacher. And uh, not only that, but you uh, blessed my family as you instructed one of my own children uh, this, this year. And uh, for that, I'm, I'm grateful. You made her feel welcome. You made her comfortable. You brought joy to her. You educated her. Uh, and you brought her Jesus. And if I'm saying that after six months, I don't know what all these people... You guys have been blessed. <laughs> blessed to have Mrs. Melberg in our school. And so thank you for everything that you have done. And God continue to bless you. And I invite Nate Cars to come forward to speak to us. Morning, Mrs. Melbourne. Hi. Uh, on behalf of the Shepherd Lutheran Church School, uh, we just want to thank you for all the years you have completed within the Wells Teaching Ministry. We've certainly been blessed to have you as a Christian example. Teaching God's word to all of our students in our fourth grade classroom, um, and you're certainly going to be missed. But um, I just wish you the best as you enter retirement to spend more time with your husband and your family, and to show our appreciation. I would like to present to you from the church and school a charming gift. Yeah, well, thank you. Sure. I don't know if you like to say anything. Okay, sure. Just hold it up. Fourth week. I've been talking to them all day. <laughs> but 